On Point is brought to you by Dajan Global. A very good evening and welcome to another episode of On Point. I'm your host, Patria Kay. And I'm Dennis Chung. And there's lots happening, yeah. but certainly a lot that happened last yeah. week in Jamaica. Top of the list for you? For me, because I was in the board meeting, it touches my heart. The matter of the truck that fell on the school child. Seven you know, years that old at yeah, Tancati. Yeah. yeah, that one was, 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 I mean, it wasn't our truck. It was operated oh, I mean, by NSW May. Mm -hmm. We are at board meeting at the time, and you know when we heard the news, I mean, everyone was just saddened by it, you know, um, because we, we just felt the, the, the tragedy. We actually sent uh, a management team there, even though we confirmed it wasn't ours, you know, but we know that it was something. Once it has to do with garbage, then people are going to focus on NSW me and we knew that we had to do something you about it. You can't be human and not feel after yeah, seeing yeah, that tragedy. Yeah. You can't be human and not spare a thought for his little seven-year-old yeah, classmates, yeah, yeah. for the entire school population at Clan Cati, his parents. Yeah. No parent should ever have to bury no, a child. No, I've been there, no, it hurts. No. I mean, when you send your child to school and then, you know, that, that happens. It's, it's Freak really out that students, tragedy. if ever yeah. there was one. Yeah. Um, an interesting move announced by Sagicor that they are actually going to be allowing some of their workers to work from home. Yeah. That, I think, is a really good move. I come to understand that there are some government entities who've already taken the lead in 2014. EGOV makes sense. They are the electronic yeah. Yeah. platform it, it, of the government. I mean, they decided that workers could work from home. It's a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer. I mean, when someone works from home, they time is more productive, they don't have to travel in the horrendous traffic that we have out there. Um, or add it, to it. Right, and it costs them less, mm -hmm. you know, because they can just get up, you know, once they have the discipline and start working, they're a lot more productive. It's a lot more friendly because um, they can now work while also being family friendly. Absolutely. You and, know, and so it, it, it and, and for Sajikor it makes sense because they don't have to find the accommodation for people at work, you know, pay the electricity. So it's a win-win. I think there are two considerations. One, you can't fry chicken from your house and serve me. There are right. obviously some right. jobs that are always going yeah. to require that someone's Unless customer virtual facing, chicken. <laughs> which I don't want, right? <laughs> if you're customer yeah. facing, there are some jobs that are going to require it. You need a receptionist to answer the phone, et cetera, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. But also, there has to be a way to measure that productivity. Yeah. Because there are some people who are going to get the opportunity to stay home and just sleep. Yeah. Put on their pajamas, turn up well, your pay based on output. Cover. Exactly. You we know, need to be clear about output. what your output is supposed to be. Yeah. And it, as far as I'm concerned, once people are hitting targets, work yeah, from. It don't matter where they work from. Win win all around. <laughs> well, folks, this week on the show, we're taking a look at Brand Jamaica in a different kind of light. We're looking at the orange economy and just how much Jamaica can benefit from the orange economy. Obviously, this conversation coming around because Kanye West saw the opportunity to brand merchandise with Jamaican symbols and sell them on his website. We're talking about what are those properties that we own in Jamaica and how can we make money from them? But first, here's a look back at some of the top business stories of the week. At number five, Facebook has sued an Israeli cyber surveillance firm for allegedly hacking users of its encrypted messaging service, WhatsApp. Facebook says NSO Group Technologies hacked into the phones of roughly 1,400 users targeting human rights activists, political dissidents, and journalists. Facebook says the lawsuit filed in San Francisco, USA is the first legal action of its kind. At number four, MPs in the United Kingdom have voted overwhelmingly for a general election on December 12. This breaks the impasse over Brexit and is Prime Minister Boris Johnson's fourth time calling for an election. Prime Minister Johnson leads a minority government and is hoping to secure a majority in Parliament. Meanwhile, the European Union has formally granted the UK an extension to the Brexit deadline on January 31. 
At number three, the Antigua and Barbuda Parliament has given the Gaston Brown-led administration the green light to secure a 15.8 million US dollar loan to buy additional shares in regional air carrier Liat. At number two, Mailpack Group Limited says it plans to come to market with the largest junior market offering in Jamaica's history later this year. There are no details on the initial public offering IPO yet, but analysts say Mailpack may try to raise as much as half a billion Jamaican dollars. And at number one this week, the Caribbean Policy Research Institute Capri says based on a recent study it conducted, Jamaica's anti-gay laws and discriminatory practices cost the workforce around $11 billion annually. Capri says hostility towards gays is preventing the country from earning more from tourism while adding a huge financial burden to the island's mental health services. Capri says discrimination alone adds $175 million to the cost of treating mental health among the LGBT community. When we come back, we look at how Jamaica can tap into the global orange economy. After the break, we're on point. Welcome back to On Point. Now, recently, there's been a lot of talk about the orange economy and how Jamaica can benefit from it. But what is the orange economy? Take a look. According to UNESCO, the orange economy, also known as the creative economy, is the bringing together of sectors of the economy whose main purpose is the production or reproduction, promotion, dissemination, and or the marketing of goods, services, and activities that have cultural, artistic, or patrimonial content. The orange economy is usually divided into two categories, the visual arts and the cultural industries. The visual arts include art in movement such as painting, sculpture, installations, and video art, photography, the performing arts and shows such as theater, dance and puppetry, live music, tourism and ecotourism, handcrafts and traditional products, gastronomy, historical centers and archaeological sites, cultural expressions and traditions such as carnivals and festivals, and education in the arts, culture and the creative economy, among others. While the other category, which is the cultural industries, provide goods and or services that can be mass reproduced and disseminated. This includes the publishing industry that produces books, newspapers and magazines, recorded music, literature, radio and the audiovisual industry to include film and television, news agencies and other information services. New media content software such as video games, digital platforms, software creation and applications, animation, graphic arts and illustration illustration, jewelry, interactive audiovisual content, architecture, fashion and advertising also form part of the cultural industries category. Join us now, our executive director at the Jamaica Intellectual Property Office, Lily Claire Bellamy, and U.S. Arts Envoy and Copyright Activist, Amanda Colleen Williams. Welcome to On Point, ladies. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. I'm all the first question and ask, what makes brand Jamaica so sexy? Oh, well, it is everything that is Jamaica and makes us sexy. The name Jamaica, everybody wants to use the name Jamaica. And if you think about it, we're a very small island, but I don't think there's one person in the world. Probably that's an exaggeration, but most people know Jamaica and associate Jamaica with a great vibe, warm, affectionate people, mm -hmm. music, food, um, exactly. Everything about Jamaica Sports, resonates, athletic. exactly. We, we have the distinction of being one of the first countries in the world that had an athlete that won both the 100 and the 200 meters, right? And we take it for granted. So now when our track and field athletes go overseas, if they don't bring back several gold medals, Vicks. we're upset, yes. right? So we came third at the World Championship, and we still weren't happy because we thought we could have gotten more medals. <laughs> and if you look at the list of all those countries that fell below us, they should have done better than yeah. us. But we're just distinct and special. I think we're really blessed in this country. And people are always amazed when they actually come to Jamaica and see all of the differences. We have the beautiful mountains. Mm -hmm. We have the sea. We have the sand. We have such a vibrant people. And another thing that we don't appreciate that we have and we take for granted is how we are as a people. So you will see our guests, for example, 
What is his name? Dennis. His surname? Chong. Exactly. Look at him. That's not normal yes. in the rest of the world. We and we, we take it for <laughs> You know what I mean? God. <laughs> but we take it for granted, right? Things like that we take for granted. And if you notice now, there's all this discussion about um, biracial and mix. You are growing up and... People are people. Exactly. So all of that is what helps to make us so special. And if you've ever been on a plane coming back home, with people returning to Jamaica who have been overseas for a while, especially if it's a transatlantic flight. The flight starts out extremely quiet, and the closer it gets to Jamaica is the more exuberant the people on the plane become. And when the plane lands, you would think they had just witnessed a wonderful concert. Exactly. <laughs> and everybody is like, I'm at home. So one time, you know, I said to somebody, I said, well, he said, I'm at home now. I can't say anything. Nobody can say anything to me. So I said to him, how long have you been away? The man, not a Jamaican born, you know. He is a descendant of Jamaican. Yes. But as far as he's concerned, this is home. This is a place where you can be free. Mm -hmm. And this freedom is why we are so creative. Because things we take for granted, like, I don't know if there is anywhere else in the world where I did an interview recently and where I buy my gas. The gas station attendant looks at me, she said, Miss B, what a way you put on weight. No, anywhere else you go in the world and somebody said that to you, you that may be caught. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I said to her, yes, my dear, but better to be fatter than alive than slim and dead. So we both <laughs> laughed, okay? But that sort of yeah. thing that we just take for granted. We're so creative and innovative, and I don't think we understand how creative and innovative we are. Have you seen the push carts with the sound systems on there? Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Mm -hmm. That's not normal. Yeah, yeah. That's not normal. Well, how much well, of I'm, that I'm, can well, we bottle and sell? We yeah. can bottle and sell it, but we don't think it is anything, which is why we're not we bottling it it's, and it's selling it. A normal we thing. think it's normal and it's not normal. Well, Amanda, your, your view, what's your view? Because you, you're, you're not just a copyright activist, but you're, you're a songwriter and a singer. I mean, that, that must have give you some attraction to Jamaica well, also. I, I have to agree with everything <laughs> that Lily Claire is saying, because it is a special place. And, like, and I never thought about it before, just being a new person in the in the arts envoy with the U.S. Embassy, I I didn't ever think that. Yes, Jamaica is a very small island, and compared to a lot of the other places in the world, but yet you'd be hard pressed to find anybody anywhere that hasn't heard of Jamaica. There's all kinds of little islands I've never heard of, but Jamaica has its own vibrancy, like she's describing, its own specialness, its own brand, as we talk about. But it's it's uh, it's more than that. It is a, it is a soul that comes forward and that resonates with not just the people here, but with people all over the world. What's the Jamaica that you heard about before you ever came here? What did you know Jamaica for? Well, I don't know if if I'm a good answer of that because <laughs> when I was still a teenager, barely teenage, barely 13, my dad was a songwriter before me and he struggled very hard. He was injured, burned 60% of his body before I was born. That was normal to me too, to, to look at him that way. But when he had his first success, his first number one in the States, where did he want to take the family? Here. Wh did which one it? was that, That's the first number one? His first number one was a song, it was in 1989, it was called, If the Devil Danced in Empty Pockets, He'd Have a Ball in Mind. And it was a saying that he had heard, and they made it into a funny kind of a dance mm -hmm, song. Mm -hmm. And it was a, a guy named Joe Diffie. And uh, right about that same time, they call it the class of 89, my dad started writing with Garth Brooks, who also just, you know, amazing person to, to look up to. So for me, it was amazing when I came to Jamaica, we went to a place up in Runaway Bay. I looked it up again and found the name. It's wow. FD Resort. It's still there. And um, they, it, was a, for, it was appropriate for kids to be there. So I got to, I basically laid in a hammock the whole, the whole uh, vacation and hung out with the 
the locals. Yes. And so I didn't have any impression. I just thought it was the most amazing place and this is where you come when you have success to celebrate and to soak up the culture. And it was so funny because my dad, I'm from a place in the mountains just called Appalachia. And we mm -hmm. have kind of a similar issues because a lot of people want to be hillbillies or the country people, but yet maybe they see what that is on TV and they don't really know a real person from there, yes. you know? So coming here, it did, it felt a bit like coming home in a way. And, and so it's very interesting that you talk about the experience about where you are from because there are lots of yeah. people around the world who want to create their version of Jamaicanness. Not Jamaican, perhaps never been to Jamaica. Yeah. But purely are looking at the commercial opportunity right. of brand Jamaica. And I think the difficulty is some people outside are finding ways to exploit and capitalize mm -hmm. on that more so than we are here. Where's the gap? Is it that we don't have the kind of entrepreneurial push? We don't have the money? We don't have the machines? Where's the gap? I don't know if it's that we don't have the money. I think it's that we don't recognize what we have. So you have entrepreneurs in Jamaica who think, no, this isn't something that would sell, but it would sell. It is selling. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it is selling, but we take it for granted. If you wake up every morning in Jamaica and you see the sun shining, the day the sun isn't shining, you have an issue. Yeah. But if you are in England and you wake up every day and you see a gray sky, the day the sun is shining, it is fantastic. So we take what we have for granted and think that it is normal and that nobody would want it. So it's almost to peel the, the veil off somebody's eyes for them to see, yes, this is something people will buy. Just make it of a good quality and sell it. People will buy it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the whole thing. But what you need to do is to ensure when you come up with your idea that you protect it. So you need to take steps to put your intellectual property rights in place. You need to register your trademark so that when you go out there and you start, because unfortunately, and we've seen this happen in our office where sometimes persons go on a trade show and intellectual property rights are jurisdictional. So if you're protected in Jamaica and you're going on a trade show to the UK, you need to the have your trademark there. protected there. In the UK? Yeah, because what? what happens is we go to these trade shows and unfortunately sometimes it's members of the diaspora who see the product and then they replicate the, the product. They have the yeah. capital. Yeah. They have access to market. Yeah. And you're talking about a little man with a great idea yeah. who jumped on this opportunity to go mm -hmm. to a trade show who is barely making ends meet, barely able to pay his or her staff. How do they find the funds to no, protect but you themselves? See, but, but, but Patria, what well, you have to look at, you know, and this is what I always say to people, you can have 100% of nothing, or you can share, right. and you can have a percentage of something that is extremely successful. So when I say to people, if you're entering into a contract with somebody, you should go to an attorney. They're going to charge me too much money. So you don't pay the attorney and you draft your own contract, mm -hmm, okay? Mm -hmm. Which isn't sometimes worth the paper that it's drafted on. You go on. to the lawyer that is Google, yeah. take down a sample contract, and that's the one that they use. Right, and then no. So you have that contract, so you are happy because you have a contract, but it's not a good contract. And so you didn't spend any money, so you are getting 100% of $1. Okay, so you're getting 100% of $1 when you could be getting 50% of a million dollars, yeah. which is better. But we're like, no, it's mine, and I'm not willing to share. So sometimes a small person needs to partner with somebody who can invest. So both of you are going to benefit. Yes, it's your idea, and you've converted it into a product. But you need somebody to give you the step up. And perhaps, Patriarchy, what people need to understand is, OK, I have nothing. But I have this, and I think it can work. And somebody recognizes mm -hmm. it can work. You probably have one million other ideas that as so you, you partner for the first one, then you get your money, and you use that to invest 
in the other ventures that you have and you're a hundred percent owner of all of those others. How expensive are we talking about this process to protect okay, my in whatever? Jamaica, in Jamaica, to protect your trademark for 10 years in one category, it's a grand total of $17,800. One seven thousand. Seventeen thousand eight hundred for ten years. Jamaican. Yeah, for ten years. Mm -hmm. And the Development Bank of Jamaica, they have vouchers that can assist you with your IP. There are lots grant vouchers. Yeah. Free money. Yes. There are a lot of agencies of the government of Jamaica that will assist small entrepreneurs. If people come to Jaipur, we will direct them. I mean we're not that's not our role and function. But we share in government if you come to Jaipur with something and it's not relevant to Jaipur, we're not going to say sorry please leave, we'll say to you, you know, I think you need to go to the DBG. I think you need to go to the Exim Bank. You have a good idea for an export. Yes, perhaps you should speak to somebody at Jam Pro. You should speak to somebody at JBDC. So we so, share. So people yep. need to just come come somewhere where somebody you think you can talk to. We will guide you through just the process. Just before you go, where are you going? So I protected myself with my $17,800 in Jamaica, but the reality is the big pie is not here. The dream of export is a real one for many of the people in the orange economy and all kinds of other economies. Let's say I'm going into the United States. What's it gonna cost me to okay. protect myself there? It's gonna cost you probably about, and don't hold me to this, but probably about 200 US. About $30,000. Yeah, really? Yeah, it's not that bad, you know, patriarchy. No, but, 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 but what but, I'm but, saying but, is you can still get that voucher you can get that voucher from DBG and say to them, I, I want to protect my intellectual property in these markets where I'm seeking to exploit it. And again, it comes back to you might find somebody who can go in their pocket and say to you, here's a check, go and get the 500, go and get 500 US, we can partner. But then, then you need to work out the arrangement. But, but, but the, the, issue, the, issue, the issue really is not just the, the, the $200. I mean, Amanda, um, if, if someone is coming to the U.S., for example, um, how receptive are people to partnering with them? I mean, there are legal costs and all of that also that they have to deal with, huh? Yeah. I think there's, there are people who are very interested in partnering with small business right now. It seems like uh, we've just gotten here on Sunday, but it seems like the entrepreneurial fever is really hitting, not just here, but uh, the states, even it's it's a new mm -hmm. movement toward that, and I really feel that that just even a few five ten years ago, when you'd say, you know, someone asked, "What do you do?" If you say, "I'm an entrepreneur," it's sort of a oh, they laugh. They, that meant nothing. Mm -hmm. But now it's it's got a, a title of respect, and so I think that especially in a place like Jamaica, that has such an inherent brand to it, and it is difficult. It's like it's like Lily Claire saying, if it's you, you can't see yourself. My dad, I, I love what he said. He told me when I was a kid, you can never look yourself in the eye. And I said, sure you can, Daddy. I'm looking in the mirror. I can see myself in the eye. And he says, no, that's your reflection. Mm -hmm. So we need each other to see ourselves for what we really, what is really special about us. Because it's like Lily Claire says, someone could be the most incredible singer or the most incredible fashion person or the most incredible narrator mm -hmm. and they're not going to see themselves that way it may be the most obvious thing to everybody mm -hmm. around but that is the, the importance of that partnership we're going to take a break but when we come back i want to have a discussion a little bit around enforcement how it works in the u.s if you go to a bar and hear someone singing your songs what rights do you have and also here in jamaica what kind of enforcement muscle do we have We'll talk about it some more on point. Welcome back to On Point, folks. We're talking about the orange economy and the opportunities for Jamaica. Our guests in this segment, we have Amanda Williams, who's a copyright activist. And we also have Lily Claire Bellamy, who's had her hands full in the last week or so, dealing with lots of copyright issues. She's top, top, she's head cook and bottle washer at Jaipo. Let's leave it there. <laughs> Ladies, thank you for staying with so, us. Amanda, before the break, um, 
Patria raised a, a question about enforcement. And if you were to go into a bar and saw someone singing one of your songs, you know, how do you, how do, you do that? Well, um, there are, that's one of the exclusive rights to copy that you have. So when you talk about copyright for a song, a lot of people think it's copyright, it's something you write, mm -hmm. but it's actually the rights to copy. And one of them is the right to publicly perform. So when you have a song that you, as a songwriter, I write the song, and then I would publish it and make it available to the public in some way. So then if I walked into a, a establishment anywhere, someone was singing my song, I would be happy about that because the collective rights organization would be there to collect the royalty that would be generated from that. Now that would be oh, in, a, in, a, income. in an ideal situation. Sometimes there are places where they're either not signatory or for whatever reason the, the, that particular performance is not uh, counted. And there are those kinds of things and that can be frustrating. But typically it's a good thing to have your song being performed in that way because then that would generate more interest and more interest and then people will uh, develop a preference for it and then seek it out. How robust is that machinery in say the United States? How confident are you that if there's someone in Boulder, Boulder Colorado up in the hills somewhere yeah. singing your song yeah. that you're going to get some royalties off that, that somebody's going to hear it, somebody's going to know, somebody's going to catch that and know that that money needs to come back to Amanda in some way, shape or form. How confident am I in that particular part? Mm -hmm. I don't know that I can say that every performance is counted that way, but it's, it's sort of, my dad would say it's a numbers game. You, you put all this out there, you know, it's, 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 it's both sides because if I keep my stuff to myself and I don't allow it out, then I have all the rights to it. I can be sure that it's always collected and monitored. But then you earn nothing. Earn nothing or very little. But if I, if I take the risk, if I step forward with the material in a, in a planned way, as we were talking about, some people just think you just put it out and it go, it's a business. You have to think business-like with it. You have to have your plan, and you have to, to execute that plan. I think the fear for some of the smaller content producers, music producers yeah. in Jamaica, is let's take, for example, radio royalties. Mm -hmm. They pay radio royalties. They don't listen to every single station. They can't go to every single party. And as far as I understand it, it is those that get the most airplay that the majority of the royalties go to. So if one community radio station decides to play a one song from a small artist because he's not in heavy rotation mm -hmm. he may not ever get anything do we in the process that we have now not look out for that small man is there something that needs to be fixed we definitely can improve the monitoring systems as technology gets better if you have the 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 app for for example that you can hold your phone up in a place and it'll tell you you push the button it tells you what song is playing that technology can very well and should very well be being used more robustly, especially like you're talking about with the smaller radio stations and with the smaller venues because, like you said, the, you know, what's 30 cents more to the, to the millionaire, but yet right, the right. 30 cents to the family can make the difference between having the money to buy the groceries. Mm -hmm. And so very much, you're very much right in that. So, so Lily, how do we use technology here? Do we have something we that... We do, we have actually, um, Amanda is gonna be sharing with our collective management organizations at the Ligonier Club. Mm -hmm. um, because we do have vibrant collective management organizations in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. and they work well and they pay out regularly. So for example, I know um, Jam Copy, which is a reproductive rights organization, they'll have a payout in December mm -hmm. of this year. Um, JCAP just celebrated 21 years, 21 years of existence in Jamaica. And they have paid out millions of dollars to Jamaicans who are members of the collective management organization. But you organization. know I'm going to stick up here because uh, the JCAP payouts are more to foreign rights holders yeah, but than let me finish. to local ones. Yes, yeah. but that's not, that's not JCAP's fault. You know whose fault that Tell is. Me. That is what we play and what we listen to. So if you listen 
to the radio how many of our local artists' work is being played versus other works. So if Amanda's work is in heavy rotation on a Jamaican radio station, yes. she's a member of a CMO, she's going to get the money. If you have a song and it's not being played, you can't get any money. And so this so is where what we, it we, is, is it's what our playlists are. Yes. So our playlists mm -hmm. determine the royalty. But this is where it gets tricky because the Indie Streets man will tell you, authentic, gritty Jamaican dance hall is not radio worthy. What you go to the dance hall and hear them playing in its rawest, truest form will never make it to terrestrial TV or to a radio station because it's not clean. It's not fit for airplay. And so those people, how do they benefit? But they still use, they still go to events, They're you know. They're going to wedding yeah. with them, pass up, pass They go to events, Mondays they do. Which is why when you see those ads on TV that say, if you are having an event, you need to get the license. That's why, which is why, and this, you see, one hand can't clap. So if I'm having an event, I need to get the license because at the end of the day, the same person who I'm saying, but him is a big artist, why I'm begging me? But you didn't get the license. You don't want to pay out the money. So when he's a big artist and now 10 years or 20 years down the road, he's suffering, it's because nobody, no only 10 people come into my party. Right? So I don't need to pay you a lot of money because only 10 people are coming. Gotcha. And that's where you will get all of the authentic music being played. That's not necessarily on the radio station. But if we're not being honest, then... Right, right, right. So, so it's a circle. So everybody has a role to play. Yes. So, so, so everybody needs to participate in the process. And the other thing, sorry, I just want to say this. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, we need to become members of our collective management organization so that they can grow. Yes. You understand? Because they're all members of the international bodies. So it doesn't matter. The, all the money goes into the pot and then you get, the money gets distributed as appropriate. Mm -hmm. But all of us have to be willing, because when you say, Oh, well, you know, I had a party and I told them I'm having five people. When you really had 5,000, yes, you get a lot of money, but then the people who made your party work, they end up with nothing. Mm -hmm. so, 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 so what they're supposed to do then, and I don't know if this is how it works also, Amanda, they, they actually pay a, a fee to the recording. Which they? The, yeah. the, the, the person who's holding the party. Okay. And then they will come and, and monitor it, yeah? That's well, how it works? There's different ways. Yeah. I don't know how it works here in Jamaica, yeah. but uh, one of the businesses that I've had to, they say, you know, necessity is the mother of invention. So mm -hmm. during the songwriter lean times, which it's been very lean in terms of the royalties in, uh, in the certain aspects, we started a venue. So I get to see both sides of it. And I definitely understand, you know, you see, I make a joke, it takes me a long time every month to figure out how to pay myself correctly because you're <laughs> trying to pay for the song part and you're the performer and you're the yeah. recording and you're the producer and all of these things. Yes. And all of these roles have value. You know, you hear about the producers that get upset because they say now, well, uh, if I don't get my money on the front end, I'm not getting anything. Mm -hmm. And you can understand how quickly mm -hmm. someone can be very upset by that. Mm -hmm. or, and, and, and I can empathize with those feelings too. But um, the way that it works with our venue is that you register as a venue and then you pay a certain amount of a blanket mm -hmm. fee and then each quarter you submit a set list of all of the music that's played there. So you need to keep track of your playlist? Yes. Fantastic. And it is a lot of paperwork. Mm -hmm. And I can see how the, the DJ who wants the spontaneity, yeah. wants to feel yeah, out yeah. the crowd, isn't having this structured, pre-rehearsed kind of exactly. vibe coming into his party. When you look at him and tell him, party at the end of this, I need to know the songs that you played, says, you just killed my creativity. Yeah. Well, he can have an assistant. You know, that could be even more a, somebody that comes in, an intern, somebody that's learning. Their job is to write down the songs. 
good solution. You but know? but is, isn't there any way we can develop better technology that does all of this? I mean, uh, the songs are digital now, eh? So, I mean, you, you can tell what the title of a song is just by plugging something in. Yeah, partly, it, but so, what if yeah. it's a live show? Yeah, That's another yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you talk about yeah. room for innovation. <clears throat> there is a giant opportunity for some very smart, technologically inclined person. To I don't solve know if a it's worldwide possible. Problem. I don't know if it's possible to do that right now, but it, it, it will be. I want to go back to protection and protection of things Jamaican. What right now have we protected? What do you mean? So, that the Kanye West jerk, situation. <laughs> Blue Mountain. Okay, fine. All right, thank you. I appreciate yes. that. Okay, so we have several intellectual property laws. Um, you just mentioned jerk. So that jerk is Jamaica jerk. It's Jamaica jerk in yeah. particular. Yeah, it's protected as a geographical indication. Not jerk. No. So I can put paprika on a piece of fish and call it jerk fish, and that's okay. Yeah, you can. Mm. Did we miss the vote? Well, we're not the only ones, you know. Cheddar cheese, cheddar. There are a lot of things that have the potential to be geographical indications mm -hmm. that have mm -hmm. lost their distinctiveness and have almost become generic. So to get them back to that level, it would mean that you literally have to claw it back to show why it is so distinctive and so unique. So we've got so Jamaican jerk. We have Jamaican jerk, we have Jamaica rum. Jamaica rum. Yeah, we do, we Ooh. have rum. So we have rum and jerk as two geographical indications protected under the Protection of Geographical Indications Act. And there's something I must say which is important because the government of Jamaica is a signatory to the World Trade Organization trade-related aspects of intellectual property rights agreement the WTO TRIPS agreement, yes. right? So under that TRIPS agreement, there are two articles that focus specifically on the protection of geographical indications. You have a higher level of protection for wines and spirits than you have for other goods. But because we are primarily producers of goods, the government amended our protection of geographical indications law to give the same level of protection for goods as for wines and spirits. So help, help basically, yes. yeah, I'm going to go through it. So basically, no, you can't say Jamaican jerk style or Jamaican jerk type. It is just like you can't say champagne style or champagne type. Our version of Jamaican. Right. No, because we have that higher level of protection here in Jamaica for our authentic geographical indications. I know you're going to so, explain, but I do want to ask. Yes, just have to no stick problem. The why wouldn't anything Jamaican apply? So why do I have to get a specific designate protection for rum okay. and for jerk? Yeah. If it's not made in Jamaica, why in the world would you be able to call it Jamaican? Mm -hmm. Because there is no protection for the names of countries. countries. From the year 2008, the government of Jamaica has been making attempts at the World Intellectual Property Organization which is the United Nations body with responsibility for intellectual property rights protection, to get country names protected, right? So that people, yeah, but patriarchy, we come right back to the beginning of this program. What makes us so special? Everybody wants to be a Jamaican. Everybody wants a piece of Jamaica. So there has not been a great take up from the other member states Ghana because don't want to protect Ghana, Trinidad don't want to protect Trinidad, the USA doesn't want to protect the USA, make they, America they great they again. Have, well, they, I mean, what USA, you have to like understand, patriarchy, is Caribbean when country. you travel and when you go in our supermarket or any store in Jamaica that sells any product, I'm giving you that exercise, and anybody who is watching this program, I'm giving you that exercise. I've gotten in trouble because I've gone into stores and I see people buying a Jamaican product, and I said to them, you know, you're not buying authentic castor oil. You're wasting your money right at the cashier. I'm telling the them that. I said to them, back. that's not going to do anything for your hair. Your hair is not going to grow. It's not going to help you. You may as well put it back on the shelf. The Jamaican one is this brand. And so the person will go back. Even though the name has the name Jamaica It says Jamaica. It. There's no Jamaica in it. 
but there is no international protection to stop persons from using country names. So tomorrow morning you could wake up and you could call a product Barbados, whatever, or Guyana, or whatever, because it's not protected. And there are a few countries who are supporting us at WIPO, but not that many. So it's, it's because, again, there are only a few countries that other countries want to use their country names, and we are one of them. Top of the list. Right. Yep. We, 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 we have to leave it there, ladies. I mean, <laughs> a very interesting conversation, and um, there's a lot more. I'm going to name uh, everything. You, you haven't all even kind spoken of about your favorite singer Kanye West yet and <laughs> what he did there. I'm going to name everything, <laughs> all kind of things. Amanda, right. the conversation must continue. Yes. Clearly, yes. there's a lot to share. Yes. There's yes. a lot of discussion that needs to happen, and we thank you thank for you. spending the time with us. Lily Claire, thank you for you are always, you're Jamaican, Lily Claire. <laughs> And you're not going anywhere. We appreciate having you on the show today. Thank you. All right, ladies, thank you for joining us here on Point. We and when we come back, numbers and Jamaica word on the street. Numbers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>The orange economy contributes significantly to the overall global economy. Just how much? Here are the numbers. In 2011, exports of creative goods and services reached $646 billion globally. Measured in trillions of dollars, if the orange economy were a country, it would be the fourth largest economy in the world after the United States, China, and Japan. It's estimated that the orange economy provides some 144 million jobs directly and indirectly globally. Almost 1.77% of the world's exports of creative goods originate in Latin America and the Caribbean. More than 64% of these exports go to developed economies. Our On Point team hit the streets and asked, what can the Jamaican government do to help the country profit more from our creative industries? The government can help the creative industry by having a place where these people can go and the, the government can give subsidize them a loan, um, a loan to, you know, to whatever, how much money they need to start their business to get themselves off the ground. First of all, the creative industry has helped itself by recognizing it is an industry and not a hustle. So for the creative industry, I know that for most of the times, creatives have a hard part in the pricing. Now, people don't value art in Jamaica as they should, so anything over 10 grand, people don't want to pay for it. In order to help produce that, in order to help build that, it would be great if the government can push more artistic foundations. We have Edna Manley, and we have Utah that do a few courses, but that's it. What do they really do in order to push the creativity of Jamaicans to make more art, to make better art, right? We have a lot of mediocre art and we have a lot of talent in Jamaica that is not being utilized. But for, for the government to actually help us, they need to invest in us. And investing in us not only meaning the schools, but individuals. I think everything, all of them should come under one umbrella. So, and form like an organization and, you know, probably the government can sponsor that organization. Government can help the creative industry by um, educational programs to allow them to understand um, such things such as copyright and maybe you know loans or grants because at the end of the day Jamaica needs you know diversification when it comes down to different fields you know not all of us can be accountants and lawyers you know the creative industry is one that should be cherished and one that should be pushed forward for young people. Lots to talk about. Yeah, that was an interesting discussion. Very interesting discussion. Um, you know what hit me though is that we, we've been talking about this thing for so long and we've just, we haven't taken advantage enough of the Jamaican name. I mean, people take more advantage of Jamaica than, than we have, you know, from a profit point of view, mm -hmm. Jamaican music, you know, reggae music, or 
sports, you know, it's just that we have um, a lot of the things that we have here that are brand Jamaica, made in China. <laughs> Go to a souvenir shop yeah. anywhere in Jamaica and check out the actual items that are in yeah. there. The vast majority are not made here. Yeah, yeah. And that's a travesty. I think we still haven't figured out the formula, how to commercialize that magic that is branded Jamaica. And I think of mm. so many opportunities that we could have and should have done it. Every four years, Olympic comes around yeah. and we do what with that opportunity? Uh, Reggae girls the other day, every time we, we have yeah, some yeah, fest. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so many of these opportunities where we are shining stars, batting way yeah. above our weight. And we do what with that opportunity. We don't, because the truth is that we've taken so long to, for example, infuse reggae music into tourism. We haven't been able to infuse the sports into tourism, um, which is, is, I think that, that that is where Jamaica needs to focus on tourism. But we haven't been able to create a tourism brand that is really authentic Jamaican brand tourism, you know. We, we're still selling it as a sun, sea, you know, that sort of thing. Um, the hip strip, for example, I mean... <laughs> You've been, you, you, are, you are team hip yeah. strip, Montego Bay hip strip, you yeah. are, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, 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 we should be making $600 a night per room on the hip strip. Here's another opportunity I yeah. think that we need to look at. So we very much are dependent on the tourism, the actual four, five million people who come here, and as much as we can extract, extract from their mm -hmm. pockets when they come here. But the power and weight of a brand Jamaica, I mean, Amanda talks about the fact that when her daddy made his first number one song, he wanted to come to Jamaica. And that seed was planted long before yeah, he came yeah. here. Go on Amazon, go on any of those selling platforms, and there's so many Jamaica branded items that are that being are not, sold by some yeah, Arab man somewhere, or, or some style. Chinese man somewhere. Yeah. We also need to recognize the opportunity that is the global marketplace. Yeah people who will never be able to afford the thousands of US dollars or pounds to, to be here. able to realize that dream and come to Jamaica, but who still want to drink coffee out of a Jamaica cup and feel like they're there. We really need to recognize that very many of those opportunities exist. They are low hanging fruit. And I don't think this is only a government imperative. I think it's going to take some really creative mm -hmm. entrepreneurs to recognize the worth and, and capitalize on the opportunity. Yeah. Um, you know, well, the truth is that the entrepreneurial class is really just starting to come back after that FinSec debacle. Um, but you're right. I mean, we, we just have not been able to take advantage of the situation. Well, folks, that's where we have to call it quits for Jamaica on points today. I've got to say a big thank you to the Jamaican crew working on the other side of the cameras. Thanks also to you, the viewers at home, who tune in every single week. Until next week, I'm Patria Kay. And I'm Dennis Chung. On point. Point was brought to you by Dodge and Global.